Welcome back, I'm Rob Lang and this is my game Clomper. You live inside a mechanical ladybird called a Clomper, which you can control by laying pipes to power machines with steam. The outside world is a hellscape that you explore from inside the Clomper, picking up resources and completing quests. If that sounds like fun, like and subscribe for more. Over the past few weeks, I've been working hard getting pick up and drop working over mirror networking in a way which is reliable. It's not been easy, but I think I have a solution that works. And in this video, I'm going to explain the problems I had and the various solutions that are available to you if you too are doing pick up and drop. It's worth noting that I don't talk a lot about server authority because that wasn't the problem that I was having. Instead, we're going to look at how you work around the fact that Mirror doesn't allow two network identities in a hierarchy. So let's get into it. So to explain the problems I was having and the solutions, I'm going to be using this simple scene. On the left hand side, we have a player with a hand, and that's the thing that's going to actually hold on to the object. And on the right hand side, we have a box that we're going to pick up. Now forgetting mirror for a minute, how would we do this if it was just single player? Well, ideally, we would take the cube and we would make it a child of the hand. And the reason that's good is that whenever we then move the player, the cube will just move with the player. Nice and easy. So what would that look like? Well, on hand, we have a script called hand, and that's going to do the picking up for us. This is a very simple trigger function. First of all, it makes sure that the thing that they've bumped into is something that you want to pick up because you don't want to pick up the world objects. Next, you set the kinematic to true because you don't want the physics of the object to fight with the physics of the player. You just want the physics of the player to be used once it's picked up. Now the bit that causes all the problems, we want the parent of the box to be the hand transform. And then we set the local position to zero. Now this is just pseudo code, I'm not going to be running this, but this would pretty much work. Back in the editor now, let's start with a very simple mirror setup. This does work for many people, but it didn't quite for me and I'll explain why a bit later. So let's see how we make these objects here mirror capable. Into the player, you see that the player has a network identity and a network transform. The network transform should have client authority checked because we want the clients to be able to move it. The cube prefab is much the same, a network identity and a network transform. We'll also check client authority because we want the clients to be able to move the object with the player. So if we were to do it the same way as we did for single player, we would make the cube the child of the hand. But this is not supported by Mirror because you have a network identity and up here you have another network identity in the same hierarchy and they don't support that. So what's the official way of doing it? Well to do that we need to introduce some new objects. The official way is to not have the cube here be both the network identity and the artwork. So we want to separate out the artwork and the bit that's controlled by the network. So we're gonna do that by creating a new object called a network wrapper. This network wrapper will have to have a network transform and identity, and it will need to have client authority too. And we're also going to add to it a rigid body. Because we've created this network wrapper, we don't want these things on the actual artwork itself. So we'll remove those so this prefab for the cube here is only what they would call the artwork. And then we have this object down here, which needs to become a prefab, and they would call that the network object. So let's make that into a prefab. If this seems a little over complicated to you, then don't worry, I did too. The network manager will need to spawn the network wrapper. So we'll pop that in there. Okay. So why do we have all of this? Well, the official way is to spawn the cube as a child of the network wrapper. The network wrapper would be responsible for building the cube. And this is how our normal situation would be. 
and this would be just like it was before. Physics would obey and I could move these objects around and they'd bump into each other, no problems there. Then when the player wants to pick it up, rather than making the network wrapper the child of the hand, what we do is, is we take the cube out of the network wrapper, we make it the child of the hand, and then we delete the network wrapper. And now you would have the same situation that you wanted. Okay, that's pretty complicated. So how do we drop things? Well, to drop things, that's when things get a little bit dicey for me. So we've picked it up, now how do we drop it? Well, the way in which we drop it is we would get the network to spawn a new network wrapper and a new cube as a child of the network wrapper and then we would delete the cube that's in the player's hand and then you have two separate networked objects. So that's the official way of doing things but one of the problems I had with that is that if you have an object in the player's hand and there's a parameter on here such as ammunition when you delete that the state of that ammunition is lost and it's difficult to move it over to this one because this one is created new. I tried another option where I'd move the cube from the hand to the network wrapper. Using this method bits of clomper became very very complicated so I decided to not go with the network wrapper option. The epiphany that I had was to say, let's not parent anything. Instead, let's keep all of the network objects at the top level here. So what does that mean? Well, initially it means when we move the player, then the cube won't move either. Also, it means that if the cube needs to get hold of player options or anything else in the player, then it can't do that using get component in parent. But neither of those things are a particular disaster. So I came up with the idea of a soft parent. For that, we're going to need some code on the cube. Let's remove the start method and turn this into a network behavior so we can get at the mirror properties. we're going to need to be able to synchronize the parent. So let's set up an automatically synchronized variable. Now in update, we can check to see if there is a parent and if so, we set the transform ourselves like this. We also want the rigid body to be kinematic, just like before. Now, of course, this is pseudocode, but at this point, I imagine you know how to get hold of the rigid body. So that's the core of my solution to parenting using Mirror. However, there are some other little niggles that I've not mentioned here that I'd like to go through now before I finish. First of all, having a hand script on a child object is a bit of a pain and is much better placed upon the player. So try and get all of your scripts that are gonna do any kind of network aware things on the same object as the network identity. Once you've done that, you can then make the hand a network behavior. Then when you want to do a pickup, you would use a command. This game object in this case would be the cube, but it can be anything that has a network identity. You also need to make sure that the player that picked it up is given authority over the cube so that their client can make changes. And don't forget to set the soft parent. We've got the old parenting code still in on trigger. Let's remove that while we're here. To drop off, you may have a mouse button or a key press, but the command looks very similar. So how do we set the parent of the cube back to null? Well, I've had this handy variable sitting up here for a while. 
we set this right at the top of pickup, then we can use it for drop off. You can only be holding one object at a time after all. Thank you so much for staying on to the end. This video has taken me a long time to get out because I tried lots of different ways of explaining it and none of them really made sense. I hope this one does. From now on I'm going to be working solidly on the game. Of course, in my spare time I still have a 9 to 5 and a family with two kids and all that must come first. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you want to see more. Please do stay safe. Until next time, bye bye.